All right, so three weeks ago, I met this pressurized water reactor using liquid thorium salt as its coolant and as a byproduct, we got a lot of uranium-233 out of it. Today, we use all of those fuel rods in this big boy reactor with 24 fuel rod capacity. It depletes them relatively fast. And this whole build is in a power plant style layout from you can, you can see from all of the turbines that we have here, 128 million HE total power output. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's start with fuel rod layout. So if I want to use eight fuel rods in my reactor, I can go vertical like building a two by two, which is too high in total, or I can build it horizontally by making a single row of eight fuel rods. So what I've noticed is that the vertical layout doesn't produce as much power as the horizontal one. Maybe it's because of the amount of reflectors that you can put on a single fuel rod in the vertical layout is less compared to what you would get on the horizontal one. So yeah, that is why I use the horizontal layout in most of my PWR builds. So now starting the reactor itself, first we make a three by three square with the pressure vessels and then place down eight reflectors here. This is where the control rods and the fuel rods are going to go eventually on the top. So fill the middle and then one more row with pressure vessels like this. And then on the second row, we place down 16 more reflectors. So in total, this reactor will have 24 fuel rods, 24 control rods on this layout like this. So filling out the middle and with that, the base should be complete. Now we start working on the top here. So, um, I'm going to start with the control rods on the bottommost layer. So placing down control rods on every reflector there is. And then in the middle of the control rods, we can make a web of either heat exchangers or coolant channels. I'm going to use the coolant channel here on the bottom like this. So fill out this bottom layer. And then you can also add a second layer. Now that is kind of an overkill and I'm in creative. That's why I can do this. But uh, yeah, you can get away by using less coolant channels and heat exchangers because we are using a very effective uh, coolant, which is going to be liquid sodium for this reactor. So yeah, I'm going to add a second layer. You can use less experiment with it if you want to. So once that's done, now we add the fuel rods wherever there were the control rods and the reflectors. So placing them, leaving one block like this and then eight in the middle. And finally, we will have a neutron source in the very center in order to make the PWR itself. Now placing down control rods between every fuel rod there is first on the inside and then we'll also cover the outside. This basically ensures that every fuel rod is sealed away on each side. So this reactor won't start if you have fuel in it, if you don't pull the control rods out, that is. So yeah, placing down control rods on the outer side as well. And then we can start placing reflectors and heat sink in the middle portions. So there will be 16 heat sinks as there are 16 spots left in here. And once that's done, we can place down some more reflectors on the outside to seal off the fuel rods. And once this process is done, we can repeat what we did on the bottom for the top layer. But this time, uh, we are going to start using the heat exchanger instead of the coolant channel. So the first layer will be just purely heat exchanger. And on the second row, we'll place down more control rods. And then in the remaining spaces, we'll place down more heat exchangers. So that's one layer done. Now placing down control rods wherever there were the fuel rods. So following this pattern is actually pretty simple, but it requires a lot of resources if you were going to make this in survival. So fill this entire layer up like we did on the bottom and then we can start placing reflectors and the pressure vessel in the middle to seal off the top completely. So here goes the final pressure vessels here and we close it up. Now with that done, it leaves us with the sides 
On the sides, we need to place down some more heat sinks in order to accommodate for the heat that you are going to produce. So placing down four heat sinks on every side, that is in total 16 heat sinks on the outer perimeter like this. And then once that's done, uh, place down some excess ports in order to get the coolant in and out. And we can start closing up the open sides of the reactor. By the way, the excess ports, I am going to shift them out by one block uh, in a later part of the video. But yeah, you can have them uh, like they are right now if you want to. So completely filling up all of the open sides with some pressure vessels. And once that process is done, we can take a PWR controller and replace any reflector the center one with it and form the reactor itself it will have a thermal capacity of 26 million thermal units for the coolant i am going with liquid sodium and in order to test out the maximum power production i am going to use a creative stirling engine now this step is important if you are going to use industrial turbines and not leviathan turbine so at maximum production rate we are going to get what 128 million hg per second each industrial steam turbine can produce a maximum of 4.1 million hg per second that means we are going to need a total of 32 industrial steam turbines. now if you are going to use leviathan steam turbines as i told you then this calculation won't be necessary for you but for industrial steam turbines you will need to calculate how many you are going to need so four heat exchanging heaters for liquid sodium salt and i'm going to connect them using some paintable fluid ducts on both the sides one of these lines is for hot liquid sodium the other line for normal liquid sodium set the heat exchangers to 5000 millibuckets per tick and also now we have a setting tool so you can copy the settings of a heat exchanger and by right clicking you can paste them so you no longer need to set every heat exchanger the setting tool is pretty handy it was added in the last update i guess so yeah 5000 millibuckets per tick that's going to be the exchange rate and as our maximum coolant cycle is what 16,000 millibuckets per second this should suffice so now connecting the pressurized water reactor don't forget that and i am going to set the 32 industrial steam turbines now so yeah for you leviathan steam turbine users just completely skip this step just use one leviathan steam turbine and call it a day but I actually just randomly start putting this and I was surprised how well this whole thing fit inside this 3x2 area, 3x2 chunk area. So yeah, that's 26 industrial steam turbines right here. We have low pressure steam connecting all of them like this and then we need to place down 6 more. So 26 plus 6 is 32 and that's everything done we also need to connect the low pressure steam for these ones as well so low pressure steam can come out of the side and normal steam will go from the back of the industrial steam turbine so i'm going to use a construction wand in order to set some pipes on the back side of the industrial steam turbine and all of them will be set to steam setting this up is a lot of work but you are going to get additional 20 million HE out of it because 128 if you use 85 percent efficiency then you get 108 million HE per second so you are going to lose out on 20 million HE per second if you are going to use a leviathan steam turbine now in order to convert all of the low pressure steam back into water uh, you are going to need a lot of cooling towers if going that route so instead i'm going to use a powered condenser as the power condenser won't use that much power only 6.43 million hg per second which is not a lot considering how much we are producing otherwise you will need to use uh, roughly three big cooling towers and three auxiliary cooling towers in order to convert all of the low pressure steam back into water so now i'm just going to connect the two rows of turbines that we have here using some pipes that go all the way like this forming some column like structure so you can walk easily so low pressure steam goes in on one side of the powered condenser then we connect some water pipes which goes into another slot of the condenser 
and finally all of the steam can then connect into the steam pipe also in order to get the power out make sure to connect cables which will connect all of the turbines and this applies for the second row as well and then we need to connect both of the cables finally i'm going to power the powered condenser separately in order to show you the maximum production and with that we are set kind of this is how it should be looking like at the end of it so now in order to complete or make it ready uh, set the coolant to liquid sodium fill it up with liquid sodium by placing down a barrel and then we do the same thing for water in all of the boilers so setting down a barrel for water and filling up all of the boilers with it and once that's done we are all set to run this reactor so with the uranium 233 fuel rods place them in the reactor and pull out the control rods by 100 percent if you have done everything correctly then the reactor should run in the orange limit shouldn't even read, uh, reach the red limit and we'll efficiently remove all of the heat out as you can see the hull heat is very low the core heat is roughly 20 million thermal units and all of our boilers should be running efficient and that will give us a steam flow of 64 million millibuckets per second and when that is converted to power we'll get 128.62 million hg per second now the powered condenser will efficiently convert all of that low pressure steam back and it will as i told you use 6.43 so even if you subtract that you will get over 120 million hg per second of power out of this entire setup right here so yeah that's the power plant completely built the reactor runs good it doesn't really heat up and if you run out of fuel rods then it will simply shut down so there is not a chance of it exploding as long as you have coolant in it depletes fuel rods pretty fast so yeah that's that now i have just covered the entire reactor i'm going to cover the entire reactor in fence like i have done with the previous reactor eventually i am going to make a power plant out of this whole thing because i have plans for this so they will be encased in their own buildings separate buildings not built out in the open like this so yeah make sure to wait for that video uh, things have been slow because i have been sick a lot lately but yeah if you enjoyed this video make sure to like it and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this i am planning to make more videos on reactors so yeah make sure you stick around for that if you have any suggestions leave them in the comments and I'm, i'll get back to them as soon as possible peace out my guys stay safe